hello guys welcome to this channel this is hebron media bringing this important video on your screen today on this video you're going to listen to how god used the servant bishop david abuye to give a prophetic warning to the end time church there has been a lot of lawlessness a lot of coldness a lot of activities that is covering the spiritual lifestyle in the church i would love you to subscribe to this youtube channel like our video so you can reach out to other persons who need to see this video and after this video is done we will analyze this video together at the end of this video all right let's get to the second video. word session i have the privilege that i quite appreciate from god's servant for the opportunity to bring it up and it is captioned prophetic warning to the end time church strange teaching somebody may be wondering but very important and timely and let me begin by saying that warning is not your enemy, but your friend. If you look at the dashboard of your vehicle, you see a lot of indicators. If your tire is going down, they give you warning. You don't get angry with it, you comply with it. Fuel gauge is showing one quarter. If you are wise, stop in the next filling station. Otherwise, you may be put to shame. A few days ago, one of our vehicles was on the road in a hurry to carry out an assignment, and suddenly the shock absorber went down. Meanwhile, it's, it's been showing indicator or indication check it check it it was not check there was disappointment when you ignore warning you end in danger prophetic warning is not meant to scare us but to save us not to scare us but to save us. Ezekiel chapter 8, chapter 3, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, to save his life, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in iniquity. So warning is to save us. Especially in these last days, a lot of danger is around the church, but unfortunately the church is sleeping. Many evils are pressing on the church, and the church is dancing. Sin is pressing so hard on the church, and the preachers are jumping. Too many evil is creeping into the church unawares. We are replacing the fire with fun. The hearts of men don't burn again like it used to burn. People don't weep again in repentance when altar call is made. A lot of alternatives have been brought into the church. Forms taking the place of power. Religion taking the place of spirituality. The church is prophetically warned by this word. That it's time for us to wake up. Because the next thing to sleep is death. A lot of evil is filtering into the church. The altar of Jesus is getting polluted. 
We must wake up. We have today a lot of fun fear, even on the altar. We are brought in jesters to create fun to people when we have the joy in the Holy Ghost that can stir up our soul. The church must wake up. We must avoid replacing the fire and the fan with fun. As you are hearing this, please let's be sober in our hearts and return back to our source. We'll be examining the seven churches in Revelation which is a typical example of the church of the end time. Church planting started in the first church. Those seven churches were remarkable. But years after, they were becoming cold. And so the warning was sent to them in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. But before we do that, let's quickly take three reasons why we need this warning. Everybody needs it, including my privileged self talking to you. Every church needs it. Every pastor needs it. Every church leader and church workers and members need warning. So we can stay on strong and make it to the end. We have commenced the race. It's not enough to receive the faith. It's important to keep the faith. If you watch it, scripture kept, keep the faith. Maintain your faith. Keep the faith. Maintain the faith. Because once in the faith, is not forever in the faith. He said, for the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the, for the first. Matthew chapter 19, verse 30. Your place in the faith, no one shall take. I thought you said amen to that. If I say you have 10 million, your voice will be louder than that. I said you will not lose eternity. You will not miss eternity. After all this running, if you and I, God forbid, if any of us miss heaven, then your race is in vain. Paul said, I keep my body under, lest I become a misfit and my place be lost. Your crown, no one shall take. Your place, no one shall take. Why this prophetic warning? Number one, it is to sound an alarm on the risk of spiritual slumber. One thing that is hitting hard on the church today is spiritual slumber. It's a risk. Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Blow the trumpet in Zion. That's what we are doing through this teaching. Romans chapter 11 verse 8 tells us about the risk of spiritual slumber. According as it is written, God had given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear until this day. How amazing it is from the altar today beginning pastors have reduced revelation to information. And as a priest so the followers. While men slept the enemy came and planted tars. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 and 25. While men slept, every church is planted with good seed. But while the leaders and the members sleep, the enemy comes to plant tars. We must stay awake to keep the enemy away. Satan has no power to do anything against the church until he sends God's people to sleep. So, I'm awake. I'm awake. Say it again, I'm awake. I'm Quick example. Samson slept on the lap of Delilah. He lost the grace. He lost the power. He lost the vision. Judges chapter 16, verses 16 to 19. Saul slumbered to the extent that all the weapons were lost. 
1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 7 and 8. The weapons of war was lost. David went in there. All of them slept. Satan has started stealing in the church because many are sleeping. Every time I hear that a child dies, a middle-aged person dies, accident is occurring to a member, I wake up. It's a wake-up call. Because until we go to sleep, the enemy cannot go to work. Every time you see things going down around your life, it's an indication that slumber has taken place, has taken over. We saw David also the mighty. He went to slumber. Second Samuel chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. When men ought to, kings ought to go to war, David stayed back in his house. And from there, spiritual slumber. He was walking on the veranda in the evening time and saw a woman bathing. When you don't go to war, you will see a woman bathing. <laughs> see, these things are very clear. If your eyes are not engaged in spiritual things, it will be engaged in seeing negative things. And I do, and they say, is Satan's workshop. Give no place to the devil through spiritual slumber. Number two reason for this prophetic warning is to awaken the church to vigilance against the wise and deception of the devil. Awake, awake, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. It doesn't come when you stay awake. It doesn't come when you stay awake. It keeps off. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. You cannot be vigilant without soberness. The church of our time is the church that is overexcited. And you know when you are overexcited, you miss saying what you should see. Soberness must be combined with vigilance. When you are overexcited, you become careless. I've seen pictures of soldiers and police drop their gun, go to drink, and somebody took the gun. We are losing our weapons of war in the church because of slumber. He said, Woe to them that are east in Zion. Amos chapter 6, verse 2. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. All the way to 10. Tells us about Ephraim. Ephraim, he had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake unturned. He is burning on one side and not cooking on the other side. Double loss. Strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray ears are here and there upon him. Yet, he doesn't know it. The church of Jesus that should be vibrant everywhere is losing strength. To the extent that sinners come to church and they infiltrate the church with their sin. Liars come to church and they teach men, brethren, how to lie. When in those days you come to church, you lie, you die. The Bible tells us about the first church. They said they did not move close to them. Everyone feared them. It was a no-nonsense church. Not like the compromising one that we have today. Therefore, let he that thinketh he stand, take heed, lest he fall. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Number three reason for this spiritual warning, for this prophetic warning from the word of the Lord is to maintain the purity of our faith, the conscience of our faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19 chapter 1 verse 19 and 20 holding faith and a good conscience our conscience is the security of our faith which some having put away concerning faith at made she pray you will not make she break of your faith <laughs> let me hear your amen again <laughs> faith has no future without good conscience The healthiness of our faith is a good conscience that is tied to it. 
a call for repentance. 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 It keeps our faith alive. Repentance puts us on our toes. It doesn't make us feel we are experts. Repentance gives us a feeling that we are growing. Like the teaching we had yesterday in sanctification. Which is required to keep ourselves spiritually fit. The scripture tells us the reason why repentance is pertinent is because iniquity shall abound. Iniquity shall abound. Now, iniquity is the height of sin. Bible scholars makes us understand three categories. The first kind of sin is air to make mistakes. There are things that just occur. You didn't plan. It occurred. Some sin came around you. You quickly repent of it. And then there is a fall into temptation. Out of pressure, you fell into temptation. That calls for repentance. But iniquity means lawlessness. Things that people do because they have lost their conscience. Otherwise, how can a man say he's married to a man? Lawlessness. His conscience is dead. And that's what the church must watch against. The reason for repentance is to quickly reverse us to our spiritual state whenever we make a mistake. Perfection is not a state. It's a process. So when the scripture tells us to be perfect, it simply means for us to keep improving, to keep moving. You don't remain on the same spot spiritually. You are making progress. You used to lie yesterday, but you decided that you will not lie again. That's perfection. You used to steal. He said, let him that stole steal no more. You used to fight. Fought everybody, including your wife and your husband. But you decided that by the help of God and in repentance, it will not happen to you again. What is repentance? Repentance means to soberly express deep remorse whenever you fall into sin. God does not condemn you for falling into sin, but he rebukes you and expects you to turn. I didn't say God does not condemn sin, but he doesn't condemn you. Particularly when you come before him remorsefully. Remorsefully. Sometimes with tears, it's all right to cry when you do wrong and repent before your father. We saw in Joel chapter 2, long passage. He said, let them come with repentance. Let them come with broken heart. Let them come weeping between the porch and the altar. And that's one thing that is missing in the church today. A man pursues after another woman's wife. And you know what people say? It's because his wife is not around. We make explanation. Somebody lie. He said, it's a slip of tongue. When he ought to repent. We have used confession. I'm a child of righteousness. To cover our sin. Sin is sin. There is no method you can use to cover it. And it doesn't matter who commits it. Sin is sin. Sin has no category of committers of it. That you're a big man. Find out from David. When he sinned, a word came to him. David, you are dead. You are gone. And immediately, so badly, he repented of his sin. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But he that confesseth 
and forsake it. That's repentance. You confess it and you forsake it. Shall obtain mercy. Say, I receive mercy. Somebody say, I receive mercy. Repentance is not once and for all practice, but once and again practice. First John chapter 1, verses 6 to 10. If we say we have no sin, okay? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, when we discover that we have committed sin and we confess our sins, we confess our sin. Sins unconfessed is not entitled to be forgiven. And if it is not forgiven, you have lost your stand with God. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Somebody say, I receive cleansing. Say it again, I receive cleansing. By the blood of Jesus, I receive cleansing. Whatever will put a gap between you and God, by the blood of Jesus, it is hereby removed. All right. That was a powerful ministration by Bishop David Abioye. So, on this session of this video, we are going to make analysis and we're going to talk about what we learned from this video. So, I personally, I learned that prophecy warning is not to scare us, but to help us, not just helping us, but to bring us to alignment. Now, a lot of us are always running from this prophetic warning and prophetic instruction. They are not to scare us. But they are to align us into purpose. They are to align us into our spiritual path. They are to bring us into the place of alignment to help us retain our track while pursuing purpose, while in ministry. Now, a lot of us are finding it difficult to submit under mentors, and this is why a lot of us are finding it difficult to align. So, if you are under a prophetic covering, most times, a lot of prophetic warning will come to put you into alignment. So, number two, why we need this prophetic warning is to help the church to be vigilant. A lot of times the church find it difficult to be vigilant because of coldness, because the love of a lot of persons have been waxed cold. So, prophetic warning is to help us stay vigilant, to help us stay focused. So I want us to take this keynote serious because after these teachings, we're going to reflect and it will help us stay in vigilance. Number three also, it also helps us for repentance. Most times we might be on the wrong path, walking according to the flesh, not knowing that that is the wrong path. But when there's a prophetic one, a prophetic instruction, it will help us repent from our sin. I pray for us today that as we listen to these teachings from the servant, Bishop David Ridipo, may our lives not remain the same in Jesus' name. Remain blessed. See you some other time.